Hi there, everyone. Today we're going to read Earth's Seven Continents, and we're just going to jump right on into it. It says, Did you know that there is more water on our Earth than there is land? Over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. That's a lot of water. That means less than 30% is land. So over here, if this were the Earth, this would be all the water. And actually it's 71% to be exact. So that means 29% is covered in land. So all of this great big Earth that you travel on and you go to school and you live on, it seems like a lot of land, but it's small in comparison to the amount of water on Earth. That's pretty cool. It says, pretend the Earth is a cookie. This much would be water and this much would be land. That's a big difference. Even though there is a lot less land than water on the earth, a ton of stuff happens on that land. And if you look at all of the pictures around it, you'll see the Golden Gate Bridge and you'll see pandas, they live on a continent, the Statue of Liberty, Eiffel Tower, lions, all kinds of different things in all kinds of different places. It's where you and I live. It's where all kinds of animals live, too, like lions, tigers, elephants, horses, cats, dogs, everything you can think of. It's where we go to Disney World and to visit the Eiffel Tower and see the pyramids. It's everything we know and love. It's a lot of things, isn't it? This land is divided into seven continents, and you live on one of those continents. I do too. A continent is a huge piece of land, usually separated by water. Not always. I live right here. Where do you live? Do you know where you live? Maybe we can find out before this video is over. So I live right there in Florida, and it's on the North American continent. It may be easier to see the different continents on this page. They go from largest to smallest, starting with number one. So, number one is right here, it's Asia. It's a huge continent. The second largest continent is Africa. And then we have North America. And then number four is South America. Number five is way down here at the South Pole. That's Antarctica. And then we have Europe and Australia is the smallest continent. Now, if you're looking at Africa and South America, and you see that they kind of look alike, they have the same shape, it almost looks like they can fit into each other. One way, if you're looking at a blank map, that you can tell the two apart is Africa has this island right here off to the east, uh, southeast. It's Madagascar. Now, most country, most continents have islands off to the side, but Madagascar is always shown on a map, and it's a pretty big island. So if you're ever looking at a blank map and you see this island, you know that that continent is Africa. Just a little tidbit of information for you. The largest continent on our beautiful planet Earth is Asia. Asia hosts both the highest point on Earth, Mount Everest, and the lowest point on Earth, the Dead Sea. Every people try climbing Mount every year people try climbing Mount Everest, but it's a dangerous climb, so not everyone makes it. A lot of times they have to stop and come back down. Asia also has the two most populated countries in the world. China and India. China has the most people with over 1.4 billion people and India has the second largest population with over 1.3 billion. That's a lot of people. Yeah, that's billion folks, not million. Does Asia have cool animals, you ask? Absolutely. If you ever want to see a fearless tiger or a playful panda, then Asia is your continent. And over here on this page, we get to see some of the pictures. There's a tiger. There's a panda. I'm betting this is Mount Everest. We have a beautiful lady up top and a cute little baby. And 
right here, I'm thinking that's probably the Taj Mahal. A lot of beautiful places to see in Asia. The second largest continent is Africa. Africa is sometimes called the mother continent because it's the oldest inhabited continent on Earth. That means humans or Homo sapiens have lived there the longest. So yeah, just like a mother gives birth to a child, and that's why she's called mother, Africa, it seems, gave birth to people. So maybe that's why it's called the mother continent. The Nile River is the longest river in Africa and probably the world, though some people believe the Amazon is a very close second. Africa also has the largest sand desert in the world, the Sahara, which covers the northern part of Africa. So that would be, the north would be up at the top. If you ever go on a safari in Africa, be sure to take your binoculars so you can get a good look at all the zebras, giraffes, lions, and elephants. And over here on this page, we get to see that stuff. There's a giraffe, we have zebras and lions, elephants. And right here, this man, his name is Nelson Mandela, and he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993. We have pyramids in the Sahara, and I'm betting that's probably the Nile River. North America is the largest con is the third largest continent, with Canada being the biggest country, closely followed by the United States and then Mexico. So we have Canada right up here, and then we have the U.S. right here, and Mexico is down here. Now over here on the left of Canada is Alaska. That actually goes with the United States here but it's way up there beside Canada, so it's really, really cold. Though Canada is larger in area, the U.S., or the United States, has a greater population, so it has more people. Many people are surprised to find out that the U.S. doesn't have an official language, although English is primarily spoken. Should you ever decide to visit any of the 23 countries on the North American continent, you must take time for Niagara Falls, which falls along the border of the U.S. and Canada. Afterwards, trek down to Arizona for a breathtaking view of one of the United States' most visited natural attractions, the Grand Canyon. But watch out for the mountain lions and coyotes. Yikes! So over here on this page, we get to see a lot of the scenes in North America. Statue of Liberty. I think this right here is a mountain in Guatemala. We have people in Mexico, Canada. It seems to me like North America is so huge, but we're the, only the third largest country. The fourth, or continent, I mean. The fourth largest continent is South America, located below North America and connected to North America by a narrow land bridge. This right here is that narrow land bridge. And you can see how, if you look way up here, it's connected. This land bridge separates the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So over here would be the Atlantic Ocean, and over here to the west would be the Pacific Ocean. There are 12 countries in South America, with Brazil being the largest by far. Brazil accounts for almost half the population of South America, and it also has the greatest portion of the Amazon River flowing through it, which is the second longest river in the world, right behind the Nile in Africa. So Brazil, like, is way, that's huge. It's, I guess, on the eastern side of South America, and I'm not exactly sure where it is, but I know that it's around this area, and it's really, really big. You might consider visiting the Amazon rainforest while in South America, but if you do, watch out for the creepy crawlies. There are more species of plants and animals there than any other land ecosystem on the planet. Yeah, the Amazon rainforest is huge, and it's hot, and it's humid, so it's really sticky if you get out in it. 
you start sweating. And over here we have pictures of South America. And right here, that's Christ the Redeemer. If you've ever seen the movie Rio, you may have seen some of these pictures in Rio. Or actually, they didn't show them as pictures. They showed them as places. Um, Rio de Janeiro is a big city in Brazil. And that's where you'll find Christ the Redeemer. Number five on the list of continents is Antarctica, which is the southernmost continent and covers the South Pole. Some people get Antarctica and the Arctic confused, but there's a big difference. The Arctic is an ocean at the North Pole surrounded by land and home to polar bears. Antarctica is a continent surrounded by water, usually iced over, and home to penguins. Okay. So this right here at the bottom of the globe, if you were looking at a globe or the Earth, is Antarctica. The Arctic would be an ocean up at the North Pole. So there's the difference. Polar opposites. Both are cold, but believe it or not, Antarctica is actually colder. It's also considered the largest desert in the world because of its lack of precipitation, which is rain, snow, sleet, or hail. It does snow, but the snow never melts, and the only people you'll find there are scientists and tourists. It's just too cold to live there permanently. <sighs> yeah. Guys, when I saw these pictures, it was just crazy. Look at this, y'all. That's a huge amount of ice. I can't even imagine that. So, oh, and look at here. They also have killer whales or orcas. And up here, this, I'm sure, is one of the science stations, and it has a lot of the flags of the different countries that are doing science experiments, observations there. Okay. Moving on to Europe. Number six, and the second smallest continent, but packed with a lot of diversity. So that means a lot of differences. Europe is shared by 50 countries with 44 sovereign states, a country with its own government. Asia is directly to the east of Europe, mostly separated by the Ural Mountains of Russia. So up here, if you're looking at the map, you see it's one big land mass, but on the left-hand side, we have Europe, the second smallest continent. And over here, to the right of it, or to the east of it, is Asia, the largest continent. And we have a better view of it right down here. Asia is directly to the east of Europe, mostly separated by the Ural Mountains of Russia. I think I just read that. Sorry about that. Beginning with the ancient Greeks and Romans, European culture is the root of Western civilization. If you're not visiting one of Europe's awe-inspiring capital cities, London, Dublin, Amsterdam, or Madrid, then try checking out the Colosseum, a giant amphitheater built in Rome over 2,000 years ago. If that's not your cup of tea, then head on over to Greece, birthplace of the theater and the Olympics. It could literally take a lifetime to see all that Europe has to offer. Yes, it could. And over here, we see different pictures. This looks like Amsterdam and London, and we have Ireland represented here. Um, Italy, all kinds of beautiful places in Europe. I would love to see them. I can't wait. I want to go someday. Last on our list, and the smallest continent, is Australia. But don't let its size fool you. Australia has a ton of character. It's both a continent and a country. It's also an island nation. I think they call it an island nation because they can't just call it an island because it's too big in size. So they add that nation part onto the end. Have you ever heard of a boomerang? I bet you have. It's a curved stick, and when you throw it, it comes back to you. Well, guess well, where it's from. How about kangaroos and koalas? Do you know where they're from? Yep, they're all from Australia. If you ever get a chance to head to the land down under, be sure to take a backpack 
with plenty of water. You may need it if you get lost in the outback. The outback is a huge area of land that covers a lot of Australia, but it's very dry and vegetation is sparse. That means there's not a lot of grass and trees. Though it's basically a desert, it's considered the heart and soul of Australia. So over here we see all kinds of pictures of Australia. The Great Barrier Reef and kangaroos and koalas and that's, I'm sure, a big boomerang right there. They also have something called a didgeridoo, which is an instrument, a big, long wooden instrument. Really cool. So there you have it, the seven continents that help make up our great, big, beautiful world. All different, with different people, cultures, geography, topography, and languages, but all uniquely rich with an amazing history, much of what we are still uncovering today. Despite all the differences that accompany the imaginary boundaries between the different continents and the countries that make them up, the human race is one and we were all meant to be here to place our tiny mark on this perfect earth. It's amazing that we all live on that earth right there, isn't it? So we talked about the continents, but I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to see if I can find a map again at the beginning, yeah, of the earth. There are oceans on this earth too. That 71% of water, well, that's oceans and and seas and rivers and lakes and streams and all that stuff. But so let's just take a look at them. We have five oceans that we're going to talk about over here. We have the Pacific Ocean. It's to the west of North America and South America and between North America and Europe and Africa, we have the Atlantic Ocean. It's kind of shaped like an S. You see that? Now the Pacific Ocean right here, that's the largest ocean. And the Atlantic Ocean is the saltiest. Just a little tidbit for you. Up here at the top, well, we talked about that. That's the Arctic Ocean. Down here, at, that's at the North Pole. Down here at the South Pole, we have the Southern Ocean. And in between Africa and Australia, right here and below Asia, we have the Indian Ocean. So that's the 71% of water that covers our Earth as compared to the continents that is less than 30%, guys. So there you have it, our seven continents and our oceans. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Have a great day.